Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've posted a video, but now I thought it would be the perfect time to get back to posting a video about what's going on in the world. So something that I've observed during my time of isolation is that there's been two types of people. There's been individuals that are trying to play the victim that are making this all about themselves and everything that they've lost and everything that they're going through even though literally the entire world is going through the same thing, granted to varying degrees, um, but we are all experiencing a crisis on one level or another, but you're still finding those individuals that are making this about themselves. And these are the type of individuals that are typically hoarding or panicking. Uh, they're the ones that are buying in excess rather than in need. Um, they're the takers in society. And they're also the people that are thinking, oh yeah, you know, I can make I can make some money off of this by exploiting other people. Um, they're the ones that aren't willing to compromise with uh, tenants or landlords. They're the ones that are thinking, oh well, I, this is a chance for me to get ahead. On the contrary, you've got the people that are being generous and selfless and are thinking about everyone but themselves. They're the givers. They're the type of people who. There was this really good example that I heard from a Buddha um, teaching, which was if a man catches a fish and eats the fish, the man eats for a day. But if the man catches the fish and shares that fish with five or six other people, the man will eat for the rest of the year. And why that is, is because during that time, that individual uh, took care of other people. So those people will then take care of them. And this is exactly what leadership is during this time, um, is that you need to be taking care of other people. Um, so when, when people experience a crisis and they do so in a team environment, it, either will, it will either unite or divide them. And the only thing that determines whether they'll be united or divided is the people leading them during that crisis. Um, so as you're finding in, for instance, America, that with Trump, that his focus on the economy rather than on people um, is making it pretty clear that he cares more about money than he does people. So instead of uniting a nation, what he's doing is dividing a nation. Um, on the contrary, you've got someone like Jacinda Ardern who has taken a 20% pay cut, someone who's leading by example, someone who is not asking her citizens to do anything that she's not willing to do herself. That action, whether or not she could afford it, is beside the point. It's the fact that she is saying that there is nothing that I will ask you to do as a country that I'm not willing to do myself. You're suffering and I will suffer with you. Um, and to me, that's kind of, that is what leadership is, is it's leading by example. Now, during this time of crisis, in regards to bringing people together, there's a very simple thing that you need to be doing, and that's just checking in on your people. If every single person checked in on those that were in their inner circle, everyone would be looked after. I'm not asking you to go check in on a hundred different people, just those that are in your inner circle. And if every single person then does that, we will all be looked after. Um, but you know, if businesses and organizations are only focusing, focusing on their business and their organization and how this whole coronavirus is affecting them and the way that they're running things, they forget, they're, they're missing the point because what runs a business in an organization? It's not the people at the top, it's the people that do the work. Um, and, you know, um, how, how are you taking care of your people? Um, and I find it funny that, you know, organizations and companies, or whatever else always say that they have a real family environment, which I, I chuckle at because they claim to be a family, yet they take no active steps in creating those relationships or building those relationships with one another. They just assume that by showing up at the same place every single day, that that will eventually build a family. And that's not the case. You have to be proactive about building relationships. You have to check in on one another. And we are all going through a crisis on one level or another. We are all experiencing emotional stress on one level or another. And as Johan Hari says that, you know, this will highlight the fact that depression and anxiety um, stems primarily from 
psychological needs not being met, emotional needs not being met. A lot of us have gone from, you know, having a job, having exercise, being having a social life to now not having any of that. So all of a sudden you go from having a purpose, uh, a reason for waking up every day and having routine and having outlets to not having any of that. And that is going to affect your emotional and psychological health. Um, and I know for myself, like I was feeling guilty that during this time of isolation, I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. I had no motivation to get up in the morning. I was waking up, you know, at midday because why did I have to get up early? Uh, and I felt guilty about that. I was worried about the fact that, you know, after all of this is over and people's like, oh, so what did you get up to during isolation? I was going to have nothing to say. You know, I haven't even been working out. And I feel guilty about that. I feel guilty that I'm a captain of a team and I should be leading by example, but I'm struggling with that. And that's because emotionally and psychologically, I'm not getting, my needs aren't being met. Now, in the last few days, I've taken a more proactive stance about uh, checking in with other people and building those sorts of connections. And I've found that I felt better within myself. And that's given me motivation to actually go out there and, and exercise um, because I've, I'm seeing that there's a purpose again. Um, and you know, it's okay that it took me four weeks to do that. It's okay that I didn't do anything during those four weeks. And I want you to know that it's okay too. Unfortunately, we've been conditioned in society that we value productivity, we value success, we value money. And I'm tired of hearing about, you know, people um, offering these suggestions of how to be productive at home and uh, how to get things done, how to make the most out of your time in isolation. You don't have to make the most of anything. I think, to be honest, that you need to stop doing and you need to start being and we need to get, um, we need to recalibrate and re reset and reassess what's the most important thing to us. Is the most important thing how much work we get done or is it how much spe time we're spending with our family and building those relationships and building those connections? You know, if you're sitting on your deathbed, are you going to be thinking about, you know, the fact that you you didn't make $500 one week or are you going to think about that conversation that you had with a stranger that profoundly changed your life? Um, to me, that's what, that's what life is about. Um, and um, so what I think will happen is that we'll see, you know, recalibration in society of what's important. Um, and in regards to organizations and companies, um, you need to be checking in with your people because if you only treat them like employees, if you only treat them as players and you neglect the fact that they are people, I guarantee you that those people will not care about your business. They will not care about the team because why should they? You've made it pretty clear that you only care about them as for what they can do for you rather than who they are. Um, and to me, that's what a good leader, what a good leader does is they put the people first and the player second or the employer, employee second. Um, and I've seen some great examples of this. You know, my dad, I feel like is taking care of his staff, um, that he, he's asking them to work really long days, 10 hour days. Um, and so the other week he provided dinner for them. Now, the reason that that is so significant is because he's acknowledging the fact that they're humans and that humans need to eat. So he's taking care of that for them. When you take care of uh, the things like physiological needs or safety, what you'll find is that people will, f will fulfill that next tier, which is love and belongingness, because you've shown that you care about them more than just what they can do for you. Uh, and that to me is how you build a relationship. That's how you get people to care about your organization. And when they care, I guarantee you that they will be more devoted uh, to making that business successful than if you don't care. Um, and the, um, the other thing that I'm, I'm seeing and what I'm enjoying observing is um, our brain's ability to justify our behaviors. So what you're finding is that people are very quick to point the fingers at everyone else that's doing the wrong thing, but they won't hold that mirror up to themselves and realize that they're actually no better and no different than the people that are out there going to Bunnings or to the beach or whatever it is that they're doing. Um, because very, very few people can probably say with 100% confidence that they have 
done everything by the books with self-isolation. Um, but that is a human bias. Uh, and I enjoy listening to people justify their behaviors, but neglecting to check themselves. Um, but again, that, uh, that's not an easy thing for people to do. Um, anyway, so the main point about this is how are you choosing to lead during this crisis? Um, because how you choose to lead will determine whether or not your business organization team, whatever it is that, whatever it is that you're a part of, whether they will feel united or whether they'll feel divided, whether they feel motivated to come back and work for you or whether they'll be thinking, you know, I'm just going to focus on myself. Um, and it's sad when people get to that point because it's not, it's not something that is innate to us. Uh, we innately want to cooperate and work together because that's how we've survived. It's in our biology, it's in our evolution. But when the environment is not suited and is not compatible to doing that, then yes, of course, we're going to look out for ourselves. Um, so if you have individuals that look out for yourself, for themselves, ask yourself, what is it about the environment that is causing them to do that? Anyway, as always, interested to hear what you guys think uh, and whether you have any feedback. If you dig what I'm saying, feel free to share it. I'll speak to you next time.